He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me, it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL, Calgary Stampeders, making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian. Now, I had to send that shit home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. I had no money. So I remember that. I got cut from Canada. I had seven bucks in my pocket. And I always tell that story. So now my production company is seven bucks. Advertising agency is seven bucks. Everything is seven bucks. So I always remember that. My dad in his pickup truck came down four o'clock in the morning, picked me up at in, in Miami from Tampa. We lived in a little shitty apartment in Tampa. He drove down in his little pickup truck to, to, to Miami to get me when I was cut from the CFL. I'll never forget it, it's four o'clock in the morning. And I thought, well, fuck. The, I, I leave home like you guys left home. I'm ready to tackle the world, to get after it, achieve my dreams and goals. Fucking crushed by 22, 23 years old. I'm, now I gotta move back in with my mom and dad. I played on great teams though. Wait a second, this is not supposed to be my future. I'm supposed to be in the NFL right now. I'm supposed to be making a lot of coin and buying my parents shit, buying me shit, taking care of my wife, but it never happened. So I pulled out my wallet. I thought, well, let me see how much money I have. I opened it up. I had a five, a one, and change. I'm not fucking around. And, and I, and, well, at least I rounded up to seven bucks. But I thought, God, ain't this a bitch? I got seven bucks in my pocket. Where the fuck do I go now? What do I do? I can't go back to CFL because I, or, you know, the point comes where you hear that voice, big runs over. Like, you, you're done, right? So I heard that voice. So as coach was saying, man, I hold on to that shit. I'm telling you, I keep my back is up against this motherfucker. We laugh, we joke, we have a good time. What right. this also helps me do, and again, it works for me, is at some point, you gotta be fucking tired of not being number one. You have to be, and you gotta fucking play angry, and I play angry. Now, I'm cool and calm with my approach, and when I step out on my field, which is a set, or, you know, like, there's some, and you're always gonna have haters, and haters are like, well, God damn, man, how many movies are you gonna make, or how much shit are you gonna do? Like, you do a lot of shit. I say, yes, it's my ambition. Of course, why not? I could do it, yeah, I love what I do. And not only that, but in what world do we not work every day? We gotta work every fucking day. It doesn't end. My back is up against this thing, you know. And I and I and I started to play angry, by the way. And and I still and I still play angry. My last match, Brock Lesnar, transitioned, and I realized if I had to be great at something, I wanted to be great in this world of Hollywood and movie making, and producing and entertainment. I had to commit, and like you guys have to commit. Obviously, you commit to something, commit to the goal. So I quietly retired. It was around 2006, 2007. I was like, God damn. I left, I pulled a Jim Brown. I left when I was on top, like number one in the wrestling business. And I left, it was a ballsy, gutsy, some call it stupid move. But I had to commit and I had to follow what was in my gut. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind. This allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off, and you guys have worked your ass off. It allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. What it also does for me, and again, this just this is what works for me. Like, <clears throat> I keep my back, excuse my language, my back is up against this motherfucker. Every day, it's against this fucking wall. Excuse my language. But it's up against this motherfucker because it's what I believe in. And when my back is against this motherfucker, then there's nowhere to go. But that way, that's it. And this is how I operate. Now, doesn't mean you don't smile, doesn't mean you don't laugh and joke, quote, right? You're happy, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy. But when it comes to business, and when it comes to executing, it's up against this. And I gotta go that way. And I don't give a fuck who is in front of me. They're not gonna stop me. The key for me was where does it start? What's the anchor? What's the anchor? So I could have all these ambitions and you guys have all these ambitions, which is great. But the key with me is just always finding what the anchor is. And the fucking anchor is getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day before anybody else and grounding my thought process is in the no one will outwork me. 
No one. I love and I respect you guys. You motherfuckers won't ever. All starts with this. Two hands. Put them to work. So it started off four o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. I work out twice before everyone wakes up. Whether it's three o'clock in the morning, by the way, when we were talking in London, mm -hmm. I was getting up at three because I had to be on set by four. I'm sorry, by seven. So whatever time my call time is, and I tell this to studios and directors and our producers, whatever time my call time, so my call time is at seven, then you back your clock up four hours, and then that's when I get up and I train twice. I'll get cardio in and breakfast, and then I'll go hit the weights. Clanging and banging, we call it. Regardless of what you do in life and where you go, respect is going to be given when it's earned, and you have to go out and earn it every single day. And I sat down at that time with the agency I was with, and they said, what do you want to accomplish? I said, I want to accomplish the world. I want the world, I want to do it bigger and better. And they looked at me like I had three fucking heads. And they were like, mm -hmm. okay. But I still stayed focused. And I still had these, still put in the hard work with my two hands. And that's it. And that's what it comes down to with you guys too. You know, look, I, but the one thing I do want to leave you with is, as you guys know, there's nothing you can't accomplish. You're going to go on, you're going to become world champions. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league. You could become president. You could become governor. You can have, you could be in, 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 in um, you could be in entertainment. You could do, Charles, and you can do Shaq, you can do that, you can do whatever you want to do. You guys know that. The key for me, what I think one of the keys is, remember where you came from, keep that shit in the front of your mind, and when shit goes bad and it goes sideways, a lot of shit does, you're getting booed out of the fucking building, or you're coming through this injury, or people are you writing you off, oh, you gotta make a fucking fucking, you know, any of that shit. You gotta, you gotta keep it in here. And it really has to, it should drive you. It should. It works for me. It should drive you. You got all the talent in the world. It's all here. It's all here. Everybody's the next best thing. Everybody's the thing. Everybody's the best.